Welcome mathematicians. Today's video we're looking at the amortization table in the context of reducing balance loans. So our scenario we have is Jenny takes out a reducing balance loan with the following terms. She has a loan for $20,000. She's being charged an interest rate of 8.50% per annum, which is compounding monthly. She makes monthly payments of $1,000. And the task you have is to prepare an amortization table for the first five payments. So this is what an amortization table looks like. We have the first column, the number of payments, second column, the payment amount, the third, the interest paid, the fourth, the principal reduction, and the fifth, the loan balance. So we start off with a balance of $20,000. This is the loan that she's taken out. We then need to calculate the interest that's paid on this balance at the end of this first month. So we started with $20,000, and this is simply a case of working out a percentage. It's 8.5%. Normally that would be over 100, but this isn't an, an annual payment. This is monthly. So we have to divide that by 12. So here's our reminder to convert rate from annum to a rate per month, because this is the context of this particular loan. It's monthly compounding periods and monthly payments. So the interest she's charged after the first year on $20,000 at 8.5% per annum compounding monthly is $141.67. She then makes a payment of $1,000. Now there is an obvious connection between the payment amount, the interest paid, and the principal reduction. She's paid $1,000, however, $141.67 of that $1,000 is used up in paying interest. Accordingly, she's only got $858.33 left to actually reduce the principal or the loan amount. So again, the principal reduction is the $1,000 she's paid minus the $141.67 that she has to pay in interest to the bank. So she can reduce her principal by $858.33 on this first payment. That reduces the loan balance from $20,000 to $19,141.67. And that's a simple calculation that just looks at the previous balance, taking away the principal reduction for this particular term. Now to complete the rest of this table, it's just a repetition of the same process over and over again. So step number one again was take the current balance Apply the interest rate of 8.5% divided by 12, because it's monthly, to work out the interest paid over the next period. So that comes down to $135.59. You'll notice it's slightly less than the last payment. She once again pays $1,000. Now of that $1,000, $135.59 is used to pay interest, which allows her a principal reduction of $864.41. In this scenario, because the balance is less, the interest being paid is less, which gives us more of the $1,000 to be applied to reducing the principal. So our balance was $19,141.67, so we now subtract the $864.41, that reduces it to $18,277.26. And we repeat the cycle again. We take that balance and we multiply by our interest rate, 8.5 divided by 12 over 100, to work out the interest paid for this third payment. She then pays $1,000. Of that, $129.46 is being used to pay interest, and the remainder, $870.54, is used to reduce the balance of the loan. So we were at $18,277.26. When we subtract our reduction of $870.54, the balance drops to $17,406.72. We repeat this again, we calculate the interest on that amount, she makes a payment, we subtract these two to work out the principal reduction and we take that from the loan balance to get our new loan balance at the end of the fourth payment, $16,530.02. Finally, the last payment that we're investigating, we take this balance, we apply our interest calculation to calculate the interest and you can see how the interest is dropping every time. Okay? That's because it's a certain amount in a percent of our balance loan. Pay a thousand. This time only $117.09 is being taken from the thousand for interest, and the remaining $882.91 is able to be applied to reduce the balance. So that gets reduced down to $15,647.11. So that's our completed amortization table for Jenny's loan on $20,000 with an interest rate of 8.5% per annum, compounding monthly, and payments of $1,000 each month. This can also be done quickly on the TI Inspire CAS calculator using an amort table function. The amort table program has very particular syntax. Values have to be entered incorrectly in the right order in the right format. So let's have a look at the data entry into the amort table program. 
first of all, you need to type in the number of payments to be displayed. So we wanted five payments on our table. And the number of compounding periods, well, that was monthly, so it's 12. The interest rate per annum was 8.5. The principal value we put in was $20,000, and it must be entered positive. The payment, the periodic payment, in this case it was monthly, was $1,000, it must be entered negative. FV, the future value, we want to get it down to zero. PPY, the payments per year, well, it's 12. CPY, the compounding periods per year, that is 12 as well. Then you need to put in a double comma, it's a particular syntax, must be correct. And DP stands for the number of decimal places you want in your answer, and I want two decimal places. To find the Amort table function, we go to Menu, Finance, Amortization, Amortization table. And here it comes up. We need now to enter in the correct syntax for our calculation. So the first term was the number of payments being displayed. So we wanted five payments displayed in our table, separated by a comma N, the number of compounding periods. So that was 12 with a comma. I, the interest rate, was 8.5%. PV, the principal value, was 20,000, put in as a positive, comma again. Our payments, $1,000 per month, and that goes in as a negative, importantly, for the payments. Our future value, we wanted it down to zero. Our payments per year was 12, as it was monthly. Our compounding periods per year was compounded monthly as well. Now, importantly, a double comma and the decimal place be one of two decimal places. Press enter and here we have amortization table for the scenario with Jenny's reducing balance loan. And we're presented with the number of payments in column one. We have the interest paid in column two. We have the principal reduction in column three and we have the loan balance in column four. Quite a simple way to generate an amortization table. However, the syntax is very particular. You need to get this right or get an error message straight away. Let's have a look at some examples. Example one, the first three lines of an amortization table for reducing balance the home loan are shown below. The interest rate for this loan is 4.8% per annum compounding monthly. The loan is to be repaid with monthly payments of $1,500. So we have an amortization table representing this reducing balance loan. The amount of payment number two that goes towards reducing the principal loan is, and we've got some options. Let's see if we can calculate this. First of all, step one, let's look at the interest being paid for payment two. Now we haven't got a complete set of payments and principal reductions to simply do a subtraction or an addition. So we have to work this out as a percentage. Okay, it's 4.8% per annum compounding monthly. So let's work out the interest for payment number two. We take the previous balance of $249,500 and we apply our annual rate of 4.8 and we divide it by 12 because it's compounding monthly. And we calculate the interest is $998. So we can sub that in. Now you can see that's one of our options of our multi-choice. However, this hasn't as yet calculated our answer. We've simply worked out the interest charge. We haven't worked out the amount of payment number two that goes towards reducing the principal of the loan. That's this square next door. So part two, let's calculate the principal reduction, which is what we're after. Principal reduction is simply the payment of 1500 minus the interest being charged of 998. We put that in and we get an answer of $502, which is option B. Example number two, the amortization table below shows the repayment, interest, principal reduction, and the balance of a reducing balance loan after the first repayment. What amount of interest is paid with repayment number two? So step number one, calculate the interest rate from payment one. We've got information here about the previous balance and the interest. So we know the interest rate is equal to the principal multiplied by the interest rate as a fraction over 100. We can put that in a sole function. We find that the interest rate here is 0.4 of a percent. We can now apply that to payment number two. When we take the previous balance, we can apply our 0.4% to this previous balance of 179000 $870 to work out the interest being charged in repayment number two. We do that and we get a value of $719.48, which is option D. Example number three. Five lines of an amortization table for reducing balance loan with monthly repayments are shown below. A lot of information here. It says the interest rate for this loan changed immediately before repayment number 28. This change in interest rate is best described as, and we've got five options. So here we go, payment number 28. There's a change in the rate for this loan immediately before payment number 28. Let's examine first of all what it was before that on payment 27. So here we have a balance of $229,023.86 and it 
gains an interest of $961.90. So here's our equation, interest, principal, and here's our rate. We know this is monthly, so it's some rate divided by 12. We can place that in the sole function, and we end up with an annual rate of 5.04%. Let's now investigate the interest rate for payment 29, that's after payment 28. So here we have a balance of $226,588.02, and that returns an interest of $996.99. We can place that in our sole function to work out what is the new annual rate. It comes out to 5.28%. If I compare these two, we see that it's gone from 5.04% per annum up to 5.28%. So all the decrease options here in our multi-choice options are incorrect. We've got a change in the rate the triangle means delta, it's a change. Change in the rate is plus, it's gone up by 0.24% per annum, which means option A is our correct answer. Example number four, consider the following amortization table for reducing balance loan. The annual interest rate for this loan is 3.6%. Interest is calculated immediately before each payment. For this loan, the repayments are made, and there's a whole heap of options, A weekly, B fortnightly, C monthly, D quarterly, and E yearly. So what we're trying to do really is find the number of compounding periods in. Let's look at the interest charge for payment number one. You can see that we start with a balance of $300,000 and we have an interest of $900. When I place that into the equation, you can see that 900, the interest paid, is equal to 300,000 multiplied by the rate over 100. Now the rate annually is 3.6 and we're dividing it by N. If we can use the solve function to find N, we can determine whether it's weekly, fortnightly, monthly, quarterly, or yearly. N comes out to 12. When n is 12, we know we're looking at repayments that are monthly. It's 12 times per year, which represents monthly repayments. Our final example, example number five. Yazan has a reducing balance loan. Six lines of the amortization table for Yazan's loan are shown below. The interest rate for Yazan's loan increased after one of these six repayments has been made. The first repayment made at the highest interest rate was repayment number, and we want to investigate this. So we want to find the interest rate R for the 16th payment. The question doesn't state whether Yazan's interest arrangement is compounding monthly, annually, quarterly. However, from these figures, we've got a repayment of $1,000 and we're dropping down by about six, $700 every payment. So I'm assuming this is monthly. This is just not enough for an annual repayment on a $34,000 loan. So let's assume for our purpose of calculation that this is a monthly arrangement. So let's consider the interest being charged on the 16th payment. We started with the balance of $34,299.50, and the interest being charged is $343. Here's our equation, where we have the interest, the principal, the rate divided by 12, because it's monthly, all over 100. We use our finance solver, and we find the rate per annum is just over 12%. Let's look at the 17th payment interest rate. We have a balance of $33,642.50 and an interest being paid of $403.71. Applying again to a monthly rate, we end up with a rate of 14.4, a different rate. Now for our 18th payment, we find we have a balance of $33,046.21 and we're paying interest of $396.55. We place this into our equation to find R, we end up with a rate again of 14.4%. So what we're trying to discover is, the first repayment made at the highest interest rate was repayment number. So repayment 16 was at 12%, repayment 17 was at 14.4%, and it remained that after that. So we're looking at the 17th repayment, which is option C. Thank you for watching this video. I sincerely hope you've picked up some of the patterns that link simple concepts such as payments, interest, amount reduced, and balances. If you've learned something from this and you think others can benefit from it, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.